Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it's an honor to have uh, you as my mentor. And to welcome, thank you all of you uh, here, and thank you for coming. And for me, uh, it's been a very personal issue with me. And I'm going to show this, uh, and then I'm going to describe this to others. Uh, others. This is my iPhone, and this is a transcription service that allows me to fully participate in this meeting and conversations with my children and interacting with my my staff. Yeah, I had a stroke about 18 months ago, you know, and I have lost my ability to fully process language. And I like to think I was an empathetic person, truly. But until that happened, um, it, it I've raised to a whole different kind of level as, as well. And it's profound to know now that I never really considered that without this kind of technology, I couldn't watch television. And I can't imagine if I didn't have this kind of a bridge to allow me to con communicate with, with other people e effectively. And you know, because I live in a political environment, I was ridiculed and made fun of because I wasn't able to process things sometimes or say things things. So I'm so sorry that I'm sure many of you had to go through this kind of thing. You know, I was lucky that I was, I was uh, lucky to go through my life, the ma vast majority of that without this kind of disability that I have. But, um, but again, I can't imagine and how the, the challenges and I, and I admire, you know, everyone that has to kind of live with these kind of struggles and, and, and prevail over them. And the, the questions that I have is, uh, is really more of a, uh, an open-ended kind of question to everyone on the on the, the panel. You know, you know, how uh, can we become more empathetic, more responsive, and more effective senators to provide the kind of support and services that you, anyone in these communities, deserve uh, to be a, a, sen a citizen here in uh, our nation? Mr. Westbrook. Yeah, um, I think it just takes political will and you know, the, the will to, to become accessible, um, to take, making it a priority, um, and just, you know, deciding that it's gonna be a priority, like Lonza was saying earlier, and on the same level as security and privacy and all that kind of stuff, um, accessibility just needs to be another part of doing business, as I mentioned in my testimony this morning. Um, you know, we wouldn't think about building a building without putting in a, a, a ramp, you know, to get into the building now. But now we need to think about building websites and digital technology to make them more accessible. Thank you. May I? Um, thank you for the wonderful question, Senator. First of all, I would say hire a person with a disability on your staff. Bring somebody in who's going to interact with you because as they spend time, not you personally, you between, so thank you very much for your vulnerability and authenticity there, but in general to the members of Congress and, and lawmaking bodies across the country, hire people with disabilities so that they can share their lived experience and so you can observe the challenges and struggles that they are experiencing. If, for example, they have a deliverable that they are responsible for bringing to you and the reason why they're not able to complete that deliverable is because there was some technology upgrade or a patch or a security update that broke the accessibility of the whatever platform they were using and now they're struggling to provide it to you, there's nothing wrong with how they, um, their ability to deliver on what you ask them to do the obstacle is the technology broke or is broken. And so becoming more empathetic, I think, requires exposing yourself and yourselves as a body and individuals to individuals who are experiencing those challenges and then not looking away and then listening to the community tell you how to solve the problem, listening to those individuals. Uh, the census says that 25% of the United States population has a disability. That number is growing. It's continuing to grow. And so think about that. 
if in your family there's four of you, one of you is likely to have a disability right now, and probably close to two of you will in the next 15 to 20 years. And so, you know, listen, observe, and experience. And because we're humans, we're going to learn from the people around us. We're going to watch it in the um, interaction with people we love or people we trust or people we respect, and that's going to make a tremendous difference. Mr. Chairman, uh, may I request uh, an additional? Please, Mr. Doyle, please continue. Sir, thank you for the question. In an effort not to repeat some of what my, my peers at the table have said, I think um, for us, I think it's, it's especially when it comes to technology, is technology is always evolving. And so I think whatever solutions we have in place today or whatever we're talking about today is going to be very different several years from now. And so I think having an approach of, of continually getting feedback, continually listening um, to those with disabilities and how can we make sure that we're offering accessibility to all services as technology continues to evolve, I think is key. And so um, I, I think we take that approach every single day is that our products today are going to be very different than our products 12 months from now, 18 months from now, et cetera. And so I think having that mindset that Whatever we're talking about today needs to have that continued dialogue and, and have that be an ongoing conversation because especially with technology, this is going to be look very, very different in the years to come. Thank you, Senator, for your statement and your question. I 100% agree with Ronza. It's very important that we listen to and engage with people with disabilities. And one of my close friends and proud self-advocate says, when you meet one person with a disability, you have met one person with a disability. So engaging a wide array of people with disabilities and people with the same disability, they're all gonna have various lived experiences that can inform and shape how we create policy and accessible technologies. And that's very important for us moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.